How you guys doing? This is Randy. I wanted to do a video on um, the diesel engines that I have operated just to, as a review because I have I've came to a pretty decent conclusion as far as my experiences have gone because this is Randy's trucking life and this is what it's all about and uh, the experience with uh, different trucks makes and models the engines and things of that, that nature uh, should mean a lot to a driver especially anyone who's thinking about owner operatorship or leasing a truck or whatever it doesn't really make a difference uh, but if you're this is going to be your business and you're going to stamp your name on it then uh, I think it's important that we as drivers uh, need to be aware and excuse me and uh use the appropriate equipment that is uh suited to us and our personal uh goals and needs as far as our business is concerned so with that let's get started now the very first engine i've ever driven was a cat right caterpillar i can't remember what model that what make and model that caterpillar was uh um but uh I believe it was a, a six horse, 600 horsepower version. Um, it was some time ago, back uh, when I was with my dad uh, in uh, Swan, Ohio, and it was in a, an old repeat. And that engine had uh, a ridiculous amount of pull, torque, and horsepower. It got up pretty good. It pulled about anything, and. It was a very reliable engine. Well, the, the 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 issue we have today is that Caterpillar doesn't make diesel engines for trucks anymore. There are rumors that circulate around saying they're going to start again, blah, blah, blah. They're in development. I don't know how much of that is true. Uh, but it's always been a huge favorite amongst the old heads uh, for the, the, the reliability and the power that it, it has. Today's market... Uh, everything has to be very efficient especially fuel efficient to save costs that caterpillar was not fuel efficient it, it it sucked down a lot of fuel so today if caterpillar was to get in the market they would have to figure that out uh, which I'm sure they probably could because they've been around for quite a long time uh, now the the next uh, engine that I end up using was obviously a Cummins and the Cummins of have earned their name in the trucking industry uh for reliability and stuff like that and they've their engines are, get, are getting better and they've getting more fuel efficient is, is really what i'm getting at they've they they've never lacked in power they've always had different models whether 600 horsepower 565 505 500 450 400 whatever you know to the new x15 or isx15 the anniversary motor they have out uh in idle they, they they actually use quite a bit of fuel it's like a gallon or more and uh a lot of the trucks it really depends on the transmission they're paired with also uh, but anyways dealing with dealing with Cummins uh the fuel efficiency I don't think is where uh they need to be in today's market um but I think they'll I mean the pressure is going to be for them to get there because of all the the emission regulations and things like that, the carbon regulations, uh, they're, they're gonna. I think eventually they'll they're gonna have to get there. But you know, it's it it's a motor, it's an engine that's that's known, and uh, that drivers have uh, come to rely on for for many many years. And uh, I've driven I've driven them uh, quite a bit, and uh, I found them to be pretty reliable. Now the D15 dealing with the Detroit diesel, uh, the 15 and the 13. Now the 13 is supposed to be the fuel efficient. Oh, we got 8% more fuel efficient than we did last year. Type of stuff, whatever. You know they did all these. <clears throat> the Detroit diesel did all these videos uh, with an 80,000 pound load or far gross weight vehicle uh, capacity and things like that and what their engine what their engine could do. Um, the 505, uh, the, the DD15 is, uh, I think, is a pretty decent uh, engine. We've driven that quite a bit. Uh, the only the issue that you have is when the things, these engines are governed 
you know, they only, you know, they, they're so, I mean, they, they, they're so stressed going up hills and mountains and things like that. And drivers drive these, these engines so hard. Uh, my friend blew a couple of them. Uh, well, the DD13s, excuse me, because of the ones that like horsepower. And then drivers just, they abuse the engines and they just, it's pedal to the metal, you know, up a mountain, which is, which is, uh, not the smartest thing to do, especially when they drops in the lower gear and you're in, in, in like eight or nine and it's just, it's just cranking and cranking and cranking and, uh, you know, it get hot and a fan can only keep an engine cool for so long until it blows and they will eventually blow uh, under that type of stress. Anything will. I mean, it's parts and uh, it's just the way uh, uh, anything with a number of parts work that produces heat and friction. So uh, the D15 was actually all right. You're going to see them most often in the, in the uh, freight liners. Now, there's some older Peter belts that have the Detroit diesels in them with, and, and the glider package and all that type of stuff. Those are pretty slick. Uh, they're strong motors. And, I mean, the 13s are cool. They're a lot quieter than, than, the, older, than the older motors. Uh, they're supposed to be more fuel efficient. Uh, Freightliner is now known for their fuel efficiency now. So, uh, I don't know what you guys are getting. I was... You know, at average, like in the mid sevens. Uh, so then, you know, I've, I've I've always been pretty traditional when it came to diesel engines, like a lot of the older heads were. And you know, I said, you know, I had this thing against Packard for pretty much no reason. That's spelled P A C C A R. For those of you who are not under, who don't realize what I'm talking about, the Packard engines, the MX engines. Now. When they first came out, I guess there was a lot of issues with them and things like that, and no one wanted them. And but obviously they're selling because they're still in business years and years later, right? They haven't been out for a long, long time. But I mean, you could find them in the Pete's and the in the uh, Kenworths from 2014, 2015 on up, and things like that. So he had those old MX13s, and guys didn't really like them all that much. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why, because I've never driven one. Uh, I have just recently had had got one, and I've been driving this one for over a month now. I'm in a P579. Uh, I like this truck. This engine is is very quiet. Uh, this MX engine is very quiet. It's more fuel efficient than any Cummins I've ever driven. It's more fuel efficient than any Detroit diesel engine I have ever driven. So, uh, the efficiency of it as far as uh how long it's going to last i'm not sure because this is a 2019 there's you know i've i have put personally thousands of miles on this truck already uh the truck did have some issues when i first got in it uh, there was a bad sensor uh in the coolant reservoir but that has been changed uh there was an exhaust leak that was fixed that was that was that was all right um so the exhaust leak is not necessarily on an engine malfunction right that could be a number of things but it was i don't think it was an engine malfunction now the engine itself has been running great even in the mountains and in the hills uh my fuel mileage hasn't been that bad it definitely has not dipped like in the other engines where if i was going through those mountains it would reduce my fuel mileage all the way down to maybe below seven this really hasn't done it like that i've i've been over i've been up to almost nine miles to the gallon you know and then the Cummings I was the, the new Cummings I just had uh my fuel efficiency wasn't nowhere as close to this to this one um a lot of times going if I was in a really hilly area like say out east uh then my fuel mileage is probably like six and a half to low sixes and this I'm still in the sevens you know I'm still low sevens mid sevens seven four seven five uh miles per gallon so um this Packard that I'm driving, I actually like it more than the other engines I've driven. Now, some of you will probably get upset about that, but this is this is my personal opinion uh, driving this vehicle. Uh, so far, it has has been pretty efficient. It's it's quiet, and uh, I'm liking it. I was said I was dead set against Packard before I jumped in this truck. Uh, when I first found out this had a Packard 
uh, engine in it. I was very skeptical, 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 and reluctant to even drive this truck. But uh, you know, I was like, ah, oh, I haven't driven one. I'll give it a chance just to get the experience. And okay, it won me over. Uh, my bad, right? For being a pack car hater. So you live and learn uh, through these experiences that I have and I do. And this is really what these videos are about. And I say this all the time. My videos, that with our experiences, we learn from each other. You know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And, and uh, this is how we, you know, we share knowledge and we consolidate things. So go to the Facebook page, League of, uh, League of Profes the League of Professional Truck Drivers, and follow it. Post your videos and information and things that we can learn from and follow. Uh, I'm part of several trucking pages you know and primarily it's to get information and to share information and knowledge now there I mean, there's some camaraderie and there's a lot of uh idiots on these pages you know that just go there and just troll and they just abuse people with their bad language because i'm gonna tell you this they would never do that to your face in a truck stop because these are these guys act like the nicest guys when they're in front of you at truck stops not any of these dudes are gonna come out in a truck stop and talk the way they do like they talk on Facebook. And most of us know this because uh, most of them will be talking with a fist in their mouth. So, but I don't, I'm not into the tough talking on Facebook. I don't, I'm not into that. I'm into this industry being set right because us truck drivers have been uh, pretty much held like we are uh, indispensable. Truck drivers are not really indispensable. We are needed daily day in day out every hour minute and second of the day truck drivers need to be on the road right and the industry knows this but for some reason we as you know drivers have allowed uh ourselves to become misused and abused and i don't really never really understood that and i don't understand how why this is happening today so I think there are, there are some guys out here, there are some pages uh, dealing with the politics, and I think they got some really good ideas, and you guys need to go find these pages, uh, trucker feed, things like that, uh, and stay away from the BS with these dudes, man, just stay away from BS with some of these guys who are out here trolling people to get reactions and attention and things like that, you know, uh, bring things to our attention, give us information, give us knowledge, post your videos, tell us what you like, what you don't like, things like that. And allow us to make our own opinion. This is what this is about. This is what my video is about. You can make your own opinion on anything you want. After seeing my video, I don't care. As long as you don't bring your negativity to me, we're fine. You know, we can have a very good dialogue and discussion about whatever I bring across these videos. And I welcome that. So, with that, my name is Randy. This is Randy's Trucking Life. And it is about consolidating our experience. That way we can learn from each other. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And, uh... Let's share what we know.